questions because we want to hear what your questions about the bill are and that's the best way for us to address it. But I will start speaking. I will first say these are public records. What that means is they belong to the public and the agencies that are holding them are custodians. That's important to remember. Our taxpayers pay those custodians. Our taxpayers pay for all those records to be created. We deserve access to the records. The question uh, that was presented in the poll is fair. This bill does nothing but restrict access to records and place hurdles that make it harder to request them. Um, what, are, you know, just, what amendments you're focusing on? Just every talking. amendment in the bill. There's not a positive amendment. I want to I want to talk two things. One, the mayors are still up here talking about commercial requests. That's a that charade. Is, that charade is gone. It's not. This bill does actually gives commercial requesters a preference that I'm sure every member of the media would love to have. Before the bills banned data brokers, that farce is gone. Data brokers can now use over all they want. Commercial requesters, it says they um, can now take 14 days to fulfill a request. I ask all of you to go fulfill a request and ask their file a request in a random town. You're going to find almost everybody responds asking for an extension. It's very hard to get records in 14 days let alone a month, let alone two months. So giving uh, commercial requesters uh, this 14-day extension for clerks to use is not a real change in the status quo. But the bill does something now in the amendments. It says, well, the commercial requester can pay to get a response in seven days. The media doesn't can't pay to get a response in seven days. They would love it. It takes a month, two months, three months to get a simple contract from about the FIFA arrangement. Um, so in, if, if your goal is to handle commercial requests, most of which I think are really requests by realtors asking for records about uh, property purchases, but if your goal is to handle that, and I understand that concern, it's a problem, this bill doesn't do it. This bill instead does transparency. So now I want to go to the fee shifting because everybody wants to paint this as just attorneys caring about money. Um, and it's a cottage industry. Unfortunately, when you're an attorney that represents people that can't afford to pay attorneys, you get labeled negative names. One is a cottage industry. Um, Senator Scutari has probably been called an ambulance chaser because he represents people in contingencies for personal injury. It's an insult. But what you do is you, if, when you represent people in civil rights cases, you're representing people that can't afford to pay. And in this world of Oprah, there's no damage claim. So the only ability to represent people, because you can't take a percentage of the damage, all a requester gets is a record. The only way to, to be able to represent them is for them to be able to pay. Most people can't afford to pay the, the $300 filing fee. Um, or to have a fee shifting provision. And what the fee shifting provision means is that I can, I can get a case and I can say, I think I can win it. I feel pretty confident, but I'm going to take a risk that I can't. Oh, okay, so let me just say, this bill does, uh, and someone please ask me questions about this. This bill guts the fee shifting in a four way. By saying may versus shall, it seems simple. But the public policy in general is that you don't get your get fees. And so courts apply that. So when, you, when they see may, that means you generally aren't going to get fees except in extreme circumstances. And then this says you should only, you only get fees, shall get fees if there's bad faith or uh, knowing and willful violation. Courts don't like to find anyone, especially public servants, in, fa in, in bad faith. They don't like to say lawyers who are knowing and willful or acting in bad faith. And then there's one more provision that no one's talked about, but it's important. And it, and it comes up a lot, which is um, maybe this week you saw the New Brunswick Today video where we obtained record videos of police officers escorting the migrants who were delivered to the New Jersey Transit train station. And the video at the end, the cops make these really offensive statements. Well, they denied access to that video. I felt we don't, and I felt yeah, that we should get it. Let me tell you why. No. So we sued, because I'm talking about the amendment. We sued, and they, thankfully, Senator Coughlin, or Assembly uh, Speaker Coughlin's firm represents them. Once they receive the lawsuit, they produce the videos, and now it's out there that these cops said these terrible things. But this bill means, uh, it, it has this language that says, if the agency receives the lawsuit and gives you the records in seven days, you have to dismiss your complaint, and you only get fees if you prove that they knew or should have known that it was a violation of law. Thank you. I know you said you wanted two questions. I'll give you three quick questions. Um, I know you represent a lot of folks in this area of law. Will you go, you represent yourself or you represent Pashman Stein in court? Uh, I'm, I'm an attorney in Pashman Stein. I represent clients, so I represent. On behalf of Pashman Stein? Uh, yeah, I'm an attorney. Yes. Okay. 
Um, we had in the one of the amendments that I was very interested in, it was a three hundred dollar cap. Would that be? A, would that go back to the original language of shall three hundred dollar cap? Would that work for you? Will you let me answer the question as well?
Um, this flips the burden and says somehow we have to go to court, which we couldn't do because we don't have mandatory fee shifting. We have to go to court and somehow convince the judge that it's unreasonable when we don't have access to any of that information. We don't know how many videos we are, there are, we don't know their technology, anything else. So assuming that uh, someone is willing to take a huge risk on a case that you wouldn't get fees, and they do take the case, then you're gonna have to go in and say, well, I'm gonna have to have an expert and a deposition and all sorts of things to try to prove that the fee is unreasonable because I have the burden of proof. So an Oprah case becomes more expensive, but most likely what will happen is people are just gonna receive these fees and there's no way to push back. And so it's just like many other provisions in the bill, a way to deny access without expressly being honest and saying we're just denying access. Thank you. Thank you for the panel.